Hi there. Welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. It's been a while since I've done a video. It seems like it's always a while since I've done a video, doesn't it? And I apologize for that. But hopefully today's video is actually going to be fairly interesting. So as you can see, I have a Lynx sitting here. And uh, the reason why I have this Lynx sitting here is because I am going to put a new LCD screen assembly inside of it. Yes. This is the Ben Ven Electronics LCD upgrade kit for the Lynx Model 2. And also an accompanying uh, 3D printed bracket for the new LCD to sit into inside the Lynx. The bracket is made by Atari Gamer, and he has a website called AtariGamer.com. But anyway, you can also order the kits from Ben Ven Electronics himself. He's got a storefront, which I'll put a link in the bottom of the video. And he has two different versions of this LCD kit that you can purchase. You have the uh, Chinese assembled version and you have the Japanese assembled version. Now, the difference between them, honestly, I couldn't really tell you. I have previously installed one of these. I installed the Chinese assembled version and this happens to be the Japanese assembled version here. But uh, they actually look identical. Um, at least this board doesn't look any different than the one I installed before. The main difference is that the Japanese assembled one is about $10 more. That's really the main difference. Let's get to it. In addition to the LCD upgrade, I am also going to install a new speaker as well. There's not really anything wrong with the speaker in this Lynx that I have, but it does get a little distorted from time to time. And it's just old and I'm actually just kind of curious to hear what this sounds like. This is one of the new 8 ohm speaker replacements from Best Electronics. I ordered a few of these some time back and I hadn't actually installed one yet. So I thought, eh, what the heck, uh, let's pop this in, because it shouldn't be that big a deal to put in. Okay, so what tools are we going to need for this project? Well, you're going to need like a number one and a number two Phillips screwdriver, preferably. You're obviously going to need the, if I can get it in my hands here, you're going to need the Benven LCD upgrade kit. And I would highly recommend ordering the bracket as well. That's an extra cost to the kit, but uh, I think it's worth it in the end because it makes it far easier to align everything inside the links. Obviously, I'm going to need to have my solder ready, so always have that handy. I've got a nice spool of it over here. You're going to need to have some hookup wire. I've got uh, a spool of some 28 gauge uh, speaker uh, wire wrap right here that I will probably use for this project or I uh, might use um, this here. I believe this is a uh, larger gauge, so it's a little thicker, a little easier to work with. But uh, either way, one of these will end up being used. And uh, that's pretty much it. I would also recommend, although there's no official instructions uh, that exist for this, if you go to the Atari Age website, that's where I got this information from, there are pictures that have been posted and uh, basically that's really all you're going to need. It's a pretty simple mod compared to like installing the kit in a McWill. So uh, yeah, I'm anxious to check it out and see what, what it looks like. So before we get too involved in this, I thought it would be a good idea to actually take a look and see what the Lynx looks like currently with its original LCD. This one's actually in pretty good shape, uh, relatively speaking. Any kind of a modification like this on the Lynx whether it be this Ben Venn kit that I'm putting in or the McWill, I highly advise that the Lynx itself has had its capacitors replaced recently, if it hasn't already, as well as having all of the power circuit components such as the Zener diode and the MOSFET and the uh, transistors replaced as well, just, to, just to, as an extra set of precaution. You'd hate to spend the money and the time for one of these kits only to have something else be faulty in the Lynx to either cause it to not work properly or worse, damage either the kit or the links permanently. So let's take a look and see what it looks like currently. I have the game Checkered Flag currently in here. Not sure how well it's gonna come up. I'll try increasing the contrast a little bit. So there we are. You can hear a tiny bit of the distortion in the old speaker. But again, the main focus here is just to take a look at the screen and kind of get an idea. So 
yeah, let's get this thing torn down and uh, give it a new visual aspect on life. It's fairly simple to take the Lynx apart. I've been through this once before in my recapping video for the Lynx Model 2, which I will uh, put a link up to up at the top. So uh, here's what we need to do. First of all, I would get something soft to put it on. Now I have this nice anti-static mat, but uh, just to be on the safe side, I wanna make sure I don't scratch the face up any worse than the uh, 20 some odd years this thing's been through I've already done. In this case, I'm just gonna put down like a, a like a soft dish towel here. There we are. Now the screws for the links are actually hiding underneath the grips here, the rubber grips. So you'll have to carefully take those off. And usually you can just get your nail up under one edge of it on one side and just kind of peel it up like that. You want to keep those secured somewhere, safe and out of the way. I guess they're not critical. It's not like you have to have them on the links, but aesthetically, it does look nice. All right, so already you can see four of the screw holes that we need to remove the screws from. And for this, the number two Phillips will work perfectly for that. Also, there's another screw that's hiding underneath the battery cover. So if we take that off real quick, you can just barely make it out, but it's right down there, center bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and get my screwdriver and take this thing apart. Now it is worth noting that the four main screws along the edge or on the sides of the links that I removed are these brass colored ones and they are a different size from the smaller black screw that was removed at the bottom of the uh, battery compartment area. Okay, now that that's done, we can separate the two halves of the links. Back cover should just come right off, just like that. Set that off to the side, since you won't need it. That takes us to the rest of the guts. Now, before I break it down any further, just to mention a couple things. Now, obviously, as part of what we're gonna need to do in this, as part of this install, is we're going to have to remove the old LCD assembly from the links, and uh, we'll be attaching various wires, data line wires or signal wires from the uh, video output of the links itself to the Ben Ven kit along the edge. Pretty much all of those uh, taps for the video are gonna come from right down here along where the ribbons edge connector assembly is. And uh, I think there's one connection over here as well underneath the uh, cartridge port area for the backlight as I recall. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the components removed. Now, I'd mentioned this before in my uh, video where I go through the re uh, replacing the capacitors, but uh, just to notate it here again, you've got a couple of connectors that you need to be careful of or be aware of before you start taking this thing apart. Most importantly is the ribbon connector assembly here for the front panel controls. That's the smaller ribbon cable. And then there's a longer ribbon cable right directly next to it here. I'm not sure if that shows up in the camera or not. Hopefully it does. Um, and that is the LCD uh, interface cable, which that one's not gonna matter because that's gonna be going away as part of this upgrade. Also, here's your speaker wire connection here. You'll need to take that loose as well. And then, um, we have another one over here, I believe, for the, uh, is that for the power? No, that's for the backlight um, power, but that too will be going away and won't be utilized. So I'm going to go ahead and continue breaking it down the rest of the way. There we go. And now I have the rest of that assembly loose. Let's go ahead and do one more process real quick since we're here and we are thinking about it. And that is to go ahead and remove the old LCD assembly out because, well, we're not gonna need it anymore. So for that, this is where the number one Phillips comes in handy because there, it uses uh, smaller screws for that LCD assembly. Do not lose the screws. You are going to need them to install the new bracket with the new LCD kit. 
because the uh, bracket that comes with this mounts in the exact same location as the old LCD assembly did. So there's just the four screws for that, and that just lifts right up and out of the links. Also, be careful with it. I mean, you know, I mean, the LCD on this one's still good, so I'm probably going to secure this somewhere and hold on to it somewhere in case I ever need it again. You never know. And then here's the rest of the assembly. This would also probably be a good time, if you haven't already, to clean out the inside of the plastic fascia. This one's got some scratches and nicks on it. Um, if I do anything, I might take it out and uh, blow it out with some compressed air just to uh, kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm also thinking about it, it would probably be a good time to go ahead and change out or remove the old speaker assembly since I have my replacement speaker. I could just go ahead and pop that in too. So to remove the old speaker is not too hard. There's some little clips on the side that kind of secure it in place. So I just, I'm just using a real small flat blade here. This is, I don't know what size. This is a 1.4 millimeter flat bladed uh, screwdriver. And I'm just putting it on the side just to get it lifted up and separated. Just like that. And then the new one goes directly in place of the old one. So we're just gonna set it in there. If you hear some uh, thunder in the background, well, that's because we do have a storm in progress. It rains here at the Ivory Tower too, just like anywhere else. There we go. That worked a lot better. So now that's in place, and I've already got my wire kind of off to the side here like the original was to uh, help keep it out of the way. So I think that's really all I need to worry about for this front cover for the time being, so I'm just going to set it off out of the way and clear off the rest of the space. There's really only one component that needs to be removed from the Lynx mainboard to do the Ben Venn LCD upgrade, and it is the uh, inductor here located and identified as basically L... I think it says L1... Um, no, it's L17. Sorry, that's that's what it's marked as is L17. It looks like kind of like a weird blue capacitor. At least it does on the Model 2. So I'm just going to remove that. And again, the easiest way to remove a component is to actually add a little bit of heat to it first and some fresh solder, just so everything blends in better. So that's what we're going to do. I've got my iron already heated up here. So if you didn't see that before, I added those uh, the fresh solder right here on these two points. So let's see if my desoldering iron is ready to go, and it is. So now we're going to remove that component. Well, you saw it fall out, so there it is. So there we go, that's, that's been removed. Now the reason for doing that is because that pretty much kills the, uh, the power to the high voltage area that would have normally powered the backlight and just saves a little bit as far as power drain concerns would be on the uh, links. Now another good habit to get into when you've removed components like that is to fill the vias that it previously occupied with just a little bit of solder just to kind of cover up the openings that were left behind. And the main reason for it is to protect the vias and to uh, prevent them from uh, corroding over time, which, you know, it can happen, you know, exposed to the air, moisture elements, what have you. So yeah, I've just got a little fresh beads of solder to uh, cover over the spots where it used to be. And it looks like it uh, did bleed through. So I've got uh, fresh solder beads on both sides, just like I need, excellent. So really, the only other thing left to do at this point is to begin the installation of the LCD itself. And um, really, the easiest way to do that will require us to get some wire and solder some various points from the edge of the LCD. And you know what, it's still wrapped up here, so let me get it uh, opened up real quick. There we are, and there's the LCD itself. Let me get rid of my static bag there. So you can see the solder points that we're going to need to attach 
are located along here all on one edge. Now in addition to that we also have um, our backlight as well. So that's uh, marked over here. It actually says backlight so it's nice and easy to see. So the backlight wire that gets attached off of one of the pins over here by the cartridge port area will attach to that backlight pad. And then these other locations here will, cor will uh, correlate to the various identifiers here and, and including the uh, 5 volt and ground that are listed down here at the bottom. All of that can pretty much be acquired from right off of this area. So it makes it real nice and easy to get it all there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and get the screen installed into the links because basically there's enough space inside of this bracket that it sits in to be able to solder the wires to it while it's actually in the cover. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that next. So to install the LCD assembly into the links, it's important that you have everything orientated the correct way. So have it so that the bottom of the links is basically facing you, and then get the LCD assembly ready here, and then have the bracket ready as well. Now the LCD will basically sit in the middle, kind of like that, and then you're going to get the bracket here, which will grab onto the LCD assembly a little bit, and help line it up just a little bit more in place, just like that. At this point, that's where the original screws that you were supposed to hold on to come into place. So I'm going to get those over here to the side real quick. And I'm going to get my number one Phillips back out. And we're going to reinsert the screws. But <clears throat> before I do that, it is important that you remember to remove the protective cover over the LCD. There's a little red tab here. It's, it's, it's sometimes you forget because it's, it's, it's there and it's in place. You might not realize it. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this loose. Now I will get those screws put in. I think we're good there as far as getting the actual LCD installed. So from here, what I'll need to do is get the wiring set up and uh, start getting some wires soldered up, huh? Yeah. I think the first two wires that you should probably start with, and uh, just to make sure, is the power and ground. Just because they're not really tricky or anything, but they kind of set the framework for where everything else needs to go in between that. So the ground wire is going to attach to the very upper leftmost pin here on the LCD connector. That's where your ground wire will go. And then your five volts will come from the last pin in the lower right of the ribbon cable connector. And I've already got some links of some black and red wire here. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get these stripped and uh, get these added up. Now I've got my 5 volt and ground wires in place. I'll probably have to do a little bit of trim on these a little bit later on. So the other thing I want to go ahead and do here, I'm going to go ahead and apply some solder to the backlight wire pad on the LCD itself. There we go. All the other pads are already pre-tinned. So again, I have to envision how this is all going to work because it's, uh, you know, I want to have enough room to be able to set it down and to be able to fold it open if I need to service it in the future. So that's going to be a kind of a trick here. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is finish soldering on the rest of my wires to the LCD area here. And then I'll uh, worry about getting them lined up and, and looking pretty on the other side.
now have all of my data line wires for the graphics as well as I've got this yellow wire here just decided to make it be something different for my backlight and then I have my power and my ground as well so what I'm gonna do is get everything flipped over and get it arranged next to the LCD assembly so I can determine how long my wire lengths need to be And here we are. <clears throat> I have all of the wiring in place. And all I have to do now is to button this thing up and test it out. And hopefully we've got a nice pretty LCD screen picture to show off. 